over the last three decades, I think, the way that the world tries to redefine certain things, redefine words, redefine concepts. Like we saw that they've done that with marriage. Yeah. So marriage always has been historically and biblically between one man and one woman. It's a newsflash. Right. Yeah. Newsflash. <laughs> but then we've seen through human history that we've tried to redefine that. Yeah. And not just in the last three decades, altogether since the beginning, since the fall. Um, you know, polygamy began when men had several wives, and that's not something according to God's plan either. Um, but then in the last few decades, the world's like, you know what, let's redefine this thing, because why should it only be one man and one woman? Why can't it be a man and a man, or a woman and a woman? Yeah. Or, you know, and they start to stretch that line, and they redefine it. Or, I mean, obviously, since we're speaking about the topic, one man and a wife and a mistress and a exactly. girlfriend and so on. Exactly. So just because you have this opportunity to mm. choose mm. and there's plenty of options out there for you, yeah. why not have them all, yeah. right? So, I mean, modern masculinity, it's not something that is new under the sun, mm -hmm. right? E Ecclesiastics it speaks about it. There's nothing new nothing. under the sun. It just comes under a different banner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why... We have to be so cautious, walk in discernment, walk in the Spirit of God, because even what we may hear from certain preachers may not necessarily be biblical. Mm. And in the modern church, with the modern mindset, we look at, okay, how are we integrating and trying to, we call this syncretism, right? Like, how are we taking the world's ideologies, imprinting it and impressing it in the church, and then repackage it as Christianity. So we've taken the feminist ideals at times in certain churches, we repackage it as Christianity and say to our young boys and our young girls, this is what Christian masculinity yeah. is. It's not. Uh, yeah, the yeah. feminism you mean. The feminism, yeah. yeah. Or on the other end, we have, you know, the red pill kind of ideology where it's, you know, um, men should be aggressively strong. And yeah. by aggressive, I mean in an unbiblical way, you know, high tempered, um, you know, letting your testosterone get ahead of you, um, you know, cigar, smoking, beer, true, alcohol, true. all that kind of, yeah. you know. So. I mean, with a biblical sense, we see so many passages mm -hmm. speaking about having self control, mm -hmm. right? We don't live under our emotions or our under our urges, right? We live according to the word of God. That's right. And many right. young Christian men out there are falling for this. Yeah. Thinking that, oh, maybe this is how God actually created me to be. Mm -hmm. Right? God created me to be this person that's going to go out there, create wealth, you know, um, be popular, mm -hmm. have a, be that quote unquote high value man. Exactly. Exactly. And then, but when you look at the scripture, it speaks about being the opposite of mm -hmm. that. Being yeah. high value in the spirit. In the spirit, amen. Rather yeah. than in the flesh. Oh. And we know, like, uh, we look at the word of God, we look at the men of God, we look at um, certain characters, they were wealthy. Mm. So people always bring up King David or Abraham, and they were wealthy men. Yeah. Right? But then there are countless men who were not. There are True. way more figures in the Bible who lived probably in the poverty line, but spiritually speaking, rich and wealthy. Yeah. And they they viewed God as their ultimate goal. They viewed the will of God as their prize. Yeah. And so that's where biblical masculinity needs to recalibrate and where men need to start esteeming the things of God as above the things of the world. True. There's this idea that having that kind of lifestyle mm. brings success. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at the life of Jesus, which is, by the way, guys, every man's example. Yeah. Right? If, if you're a man, the, your ultimate example is Jesus himself. If you look at the lifestyle of Jesus, example, Matthew chapter 8. Yeah. The guy comes to him, Jesus, I want to follow you. Jesus says, foxes have hole. Birds have nests, yep. but the Son of Man has no, no place to lay his head. Exactly. That's not a sign, in, in a modern sense, that's not a sign of a person that wants to be influential no. or successful. No. But then when you look back, 
the most influential person in the history of mankind was the person that didn't have a place to lay his head. Mm -hmm. He didn't have this crazy physique, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, Paul, Paul would say, you know, this spiritual um, exercise, spiritual pursuit is mm -hmm. more imp mm -hmm. important than my physical, you know, exercise or my physical needs. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you look at that, it doesn't, it doesn't match with the message of today. No, no, not at all. Because the funny thing is, I, you know, as I was actually coming here, I, I was reminded of you YouTube channels, mm -hmm. okay? And these guys were out there saying, you got to work out, you're going to look great, and girls yeah. will follow you, right? Yeah. You're going to get a lot of girls. And by the end of that video, this guy proceeds to say, hey, by the way, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. If anyone wants to become a Christian, accept Jesus as your Lord and yeah. your Savior. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought... Hold on a sec. You're giving them an image yeah. of of a person that's not Jesus. A womanizer. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to lead them to Jesus, then Jesus becomes their example, mm. especially for men. And we're not here, by the way, guys. We're not saying, hey, go just eat junk food. Don't worry about your your physique. Uh, do what you like with it. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's it's the other way around. Take care of yourself, right? This is the body that God has given you. But that doesn't become more important than your spiritual no. life. No. And that doesn't make you manlier just because you might be twice as big as you are now. Mm. To be honest, the real men out there are the ones that are waking up every day, going out there to provide for their families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not the person that is looking great and going there from one girl to another to another mm -hmm. that's not something that christ has called us to be as men of course